In this lesson, we're going to create our first page in software, like actually build out the page together. And it's going to be our project listing page. Okay. So let's go to our pages and click on projects. Once there, we'll see that we have two menus here. We're going to come back to menus. Let's just leave it exactly as it is for now. And I'm going to come back and explain it all. But for now, just know that they're not doing any harm. We're going to leave them there. We're on the projects page. We want to add our first block. Now this page is our project listing page. So let's go to add block. And over here we have dynamic and static. Dynamic blocks are blocks that will pull in data from your data source. Static blocks are blocks that you could just show in static information for like heroes or anything like that, where it's just like you have static text there. You don't need dynamically loading the data. But for this case, we do need dynamic data. So we need to pull that data from our database. And it is a list block. And we have some newer blocks up here, but the one that I'm actually going to go with is handy dandy list block right here. I'm going to click on the list block and automatically you see that it's come configured for us. But well, we now need to connect it to the data source. Where is this list block going to get the data from in order to display that information? Okay. So I'm going to go to Airtable and I'm going to my client portal video build right there. And I need to connect this to projects, right? This is the project listing page. And we have already built that project table in our Airtable. And now we're going to connect it to our projects. Okay. So we have connected that table. However, there is not much data there yet to show. All right. We'll come back to that. But in, in the meantime, let's continue to walk through setting up this listing block. So you see these things over here. This is called a filter, right? Now you could choose to leave those or not. But in our case, we're actually not going to leave the filter. A filter could be like if you click on done, it's only going to show the projects that are done. But for the our sakes, we're not going to do that. So we're going to go over to content and we are going to see the filters right here. I'm going to click on the little three buttons and I'm going to remove those filters. OK, now we have this nice visualized look. OK, now we see this search bar up here. The search bar allows you to type in something and to find all the projects you're looking for. Right. And you can see search by right here in the content section of this block. And you could choose multiple fields that will then allow you to search by their name and then to be able to find those projects. But again, we don't need a search bar for this page yet. So I'm just going to toggle off the search bar. Okay. Next up, we see that we have these item fields. Now pay attention here because this is really important. This is where we are mapping the data from your database to the data in the front, in our front end here, which is software. Okay. So in this case, we have an image here. Right. And that's being displayed here. But we actually don't have an image in our database yet. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our database and we need to create an image for it. All right. So we can go back to the database and go to projects. And we're going to create a new field that's going to be called cover image. And this is going to be an attachment. So that's good. Now, in addition to that, we also need our status. Do we have a status here? We do. That's great. I'm just going to throw in a quick file here. Give me one second. There we go. Just to expedite this, so we can have some good looking stuff here. All right. All right. Excellent. So we have our project name and our current image there. All right. And if we go back to software here, it's not going to pull up right away. We do have to refresh the page or reload the data source here to fetch the new fields that we just added. Now we'll go back to content. We'll go to image and cover images right there. And would you look at that? It pulled in the images from our database right away. So the database image looks like this. That's the beauty of software, making it so easy to visualize the data from your database to software. All right. So next up is we want to show the name here. Okay. So go to project name and we have the option to show this in a couple ways. Right now it's called a heading three. If I go to heading one, it's going to make the text bigger. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's not. Let's also try maybe a heading two. What does that look like? That's fine. And so we'll keep the heading two. I'm going to remove the label because I don't really need the label there. I understand that it's a name. And then we have the description below it, right? And I actually don't want the description. So instead of the description, I want to format this as a tag. All right. And my goal right now is to get us back to the tag look. So we could say that this is in progress, right? And so you can show it as a text, but I think our actual tag functionality in software will be a better look for you. So I'm going to say tag, 
And for this, we actually need to find the project status. And there it is. There's our tag. And I'm actually going to remove the label. And for the colors, you know what? I'll say I'll pull in that and we'll bring it in like that for now, which will be fine. So now we have our projects. They're being displayed, our cover image, our project name, and our project status, okay? Now I wanna change the styles for this a little bit because I just don't love the styles yet. So I'm gonna go to styles of this and I'm gonna see that I have my background color. It's already there, that's great. Go back to my content and I'm gonna go to my project name. I can see that I have within this, I have all the ability to change the style. So if I click on this little paint button right here, I can change the styling there. I can also go up here and change the styling here. And there it is. I see that background colors right there. And I want to change that background color to white. All right, so that's looking better. I like that. So again, we have our content here that we've dynamically mapped to field in our database. And then we went in and we styled individually how we want those all to look. And now we are looking pretty good here, all right? So what's this add record button up here? Well, it is an action button. And an action button allows the user to click on that button and it would show a pop-up. And that pop-up could provide information for you to fill in to create a new thing. And what thing would they want to create on the projects page? They want to create a new project. So if we go over to actions here, we can see that we have that add record. I'm going to go to the toggle down and I'm going to adjust it. And I'm going to say add project. Okay. So now I have add project there, but should be able to add a project, clients and admin. You know what? You could choose whatever you want as the developer now, but I'm going to say only admins can add a project. Okay. And if we go back to our initial app requirements, we'll see right here that admins can create and edit projects, whereas only clients can view projects. Well, we can upload files of projects and view projects right there, right? So again, according to our project requirements, clients cannot do this. So let's go back here and we'll go on this button. And you see this little icon right here, it says button visibility. Let's click on it. And let's say that the only user that can see this button is a logged in user that is a admin. Otherwise, clients will not be able to see this button. That means they cannot add new projects. Only admins can add new projects. How cool is that? Super cool. Let's finish this action button for add a project. And then I'll show you what this page looks like afterwards. All right. So now I have this add project and I'm going to click on the down arrow here. Now, this allows us to collect information that we want to collect when creating a new project. And in this case, there's quite a bit of fields that we need here. We need the project name, the status, the client that relates to, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to work through this one at a time here. And you can feel free to fast forward after the first couple because it gets repetitive. But the first thing here is the project name. So what is a project name? It's text. We're inputting text. We're going back to the input types, right? And this is going to map to the project name, okay? And the label would be project name on that, all right? So this is the label is an indicator to our user the information we want them to fill in in order to properly sync that back to our, the, our database in the field that we want that data stored. All right, I'm going to carry that. I'm going to add a new field here. And this is going to be a drop-down field because for this, we want the status, okay? So the project status, and look at that. It pulled in the drop down values for our status field in Airtable right away for us. So that's already synced up. Now we just need to add a label there, project status. That's great. Next up, let's do a description. So it's a description. Is it text? Is it long text? It's long text. It's going to be description and it's going to be project description. All right, that's great. Now we want to go back to our database now and go into projects. And there's a couple more fields that we want to add to this. Remember I said in the beginning, we're going to keep adding as we go here. And so we want to add a project start date and a project end date. So we're going to say start date, rate, and then we're going to say end date. So this is the date that the project is, needs to be completed or is completed, all right? 
Now, in addition to that, we need to map it to the company. That's great. And we also need to map it to the users. So which users have access to this project, right? So what we're going to say here is we're going to say project members. And again, we're going to use that link to another record. And what record would, would we want to link to here? Again, we're on the project table. We want to link it to other users, okay? And we want to allow multiple users to be able to be assigned to this project. I'm going to create that field. Now I can go in here and I can say, all right, which users do I want to be assigned to this? I'm going to pick my user, okay? Also, if I want to pick our start and end date, I can go and grab some dates there just to fill in some basic information. And we have now updated this. And now we can go back into softer. Again, we got to do a quick refresh to fetch those fields that we just added to the database. Go back into our actions, carrot down, carrot down, add field. And this is going to be a date field for our start date. There's our start date. I'm going to carrot that. I'm going to add a new one. It's going to be date again. And this is going to be our end date. And it's going to be end date. And then finally, I have a drop down field. And this is going to be our project members. And again, it pulls in all of the users that we have in the database, which will then be used as values in our drop down. Project members. Fantastic. So let's preview what this looks like for external users. So I go up here to the right hand corner and I have two buttons. Preview is a test button that I can click, which I just did. And it's going to show me what the app looks like in a development version, meaning nobody can see this on the internet yet, except for myself. You'll see that the tags are missing here. And that's simply because we don't have tags for them. So I'm just going to go in there, update that. All right. And then from there, I could see that I have this add project button showing. Now, if I click on in here in the preview as, I can use a very important feature to software called users and previewing as those users. This allows me to preview the application as different users. And if I look at this user in my database, Leia, I could see that she is an admin. And remember, admins have access to this button. So now if I click the button, it's automatically created this pop-up for me with all the fields that I told it that I wanted it to do. And then once I entered all this data, I could add it. And then a new project would be created for me. And so in this lesson, just this last 10 minutes, we've created an entire page. We've showed all of our projects. We've mapped it from our database dynamically. We've styled those projects. And we've created the ability for admins only to be able to create new projects and add them to our database, which is that two-way sync that we've connected. You're doing it though. That was a great lesson. I'm gonna see you in the next lesson where we're gonna keep building and we will work on our project detail page as we just built the project list page. So I'll see you there.